you. Council, may I please have a motion to resume? Councillor Tom, thank you. Councillor Humphrey, second. All in favor? Contrary? That's carried. May I please have uh, declarations of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof? Seeing none, Mr. Clerk, may I please have a motion to approve the agenda as has been circulated? Councillor Gartner, thank you. Sir, second. Councillor Tom, comments or questions on that? There's uh, three new items. All in favor then? Contrary? That is carried. We will now move to, um, well, we have no delegations per se. We, will, we do have uh, public consultation. We have uh, three people. So I would uh, request that you come up to the microphone, give us your name and your address, please, and you have five minutes. And up first is Mr. Kimmerer from Sport Aurora. Now it is. Thank you. Stephen Kimmerer, uh, 15800 uh, uh, Young Street, Aurora. Um, change my glasses here quickly so I can read. And is it forward that way? Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council, town staff. My name is Stephen Kimmerer. On behalf of the Board of Sport Aurora and the 35 member sport organizations, I thank you for the opportunity to present to you tonight. Since Councillor Michael Thompson asked you to approve the development of a sport plan last February, our membership has been active in producing a white paper that has researched, that was researched by our sports plan committee and was made up of almost 20 sports leaders. The wrong way? Thank you. There we go. Sport Aurora felt that this plan could be an important roadmap for the sport development in the town for decades to come. Our working group met extensively since February and our white paper was presented to the consultants of the sport plan after each of our members reviewed it and approved its content. It addresses each of the seven areas of interest suggested by Mr. Downey and we feel that our research into the best practices in many of the other towns and jurisdictions, it is a comprehensive and feasible approach to building an active community with sport organizations contributing to the quality of life. Many of the 47 recommendations were directed towards cooperative solutions. My purpose, my purpose here tonight is to bring to your attention our organization's need for financial support if we are to continue to be able to do the work that we are well known for, this, for in this community. Our budget summary, uh, sorry, excuse me, um, our budget summary for the next three years is presented here and the details of the budget and the deliverables. Right there. What is not in the budget, however, are the contributions we have already made to the town. So you can assess value as, we, as you consider our request for support. In the past four years, Sport Aurora has brought just under $500,000 in funding to the town in forms of grants that have benefited our community. We have successfully acquired sponsors and donations for our programs, such as All Kids Can Play program, where almost $50,000 has been raised to help children without the financial resources to participate in sport. As a community partner with Canadian Tire Jumpstart, we help distribute another $15,000 annually within this community. We were the founders of uh, Aurora Sports Hall of Fame that will become a tourist attraction at the SARC and is now recognized as a model for the celebration of sports excellence in the region, if not the country. We have professionally trained almost 200 women coaches, building capacity in our sports members uh, and therefore adding to the volunteer ranks of coaches in Aurora. In the past five years, we have celebrated the contribution of over 100 sports volunteers who were deemed the best of the best within each of our members' organizations through the Magna Volunteer Recognition event. We have also annually celebrated the efforts of more than 750 players, coaches, by recognizing their accomplishments at the provincial, national, and international championships at our annual Breakfast of Champions. Many of you on council have attended these worthwhile community events along with the families and friends of those honored. We have recently organized a multi-sectoral working group of community leaders to help build Aurora as Canada's most active community and working closely with the Mayor's Task Force on this five-year project. We're about to submit a grant for $750,000 to the Ontario Trillium Foundation to help drive this initiative. 
As well, we've been asked to participate in the town's Healthy Kids Community Grant of uh, $525,000 over the next three years because we have the expertise and volunteer base to make that a success. The fact is, we have met or exceeded every deliverable we have ever been contracted for and we want to continue to bring programs and services to Aurora. You will notice that the budget presented here tonight exhibits no trillion funding which has now expired. One minute please, Mr. Kimmerer. Pardon me? One minute. One minute. It does show our expenses and revenue streams we have been able to develop. We even have a f local sponsor ready to help us keep the organization fully functioning, but as of right now we are running on a small reserve until we attract additional financial support or create new revenue streams. Therefore, what we are asking is twofold, that you consider financial support for the sport plan that you see tomorrow evening, and secondly, that Sport Aurora becomes a partner in that successful delivery of that plan. We have the history, the expertise, the membership, and the drive to do this, but it can't happen without the financial support of our organization. In this year of sport, it would be a shame if a sport plan was conceived but laid dormant on the shelf after the financial investment of, a, of consultation and the extensive investment of time and expertise by your sport partners in Sport Aurora. We ask that the sport plan be appropriately funded and that Sport Aurora is considered for a service agreement with a set of deliverables established that will ensure success. We are prepared to enter into an agreement for the mutual benefit of town and sport. In closing, Sport Aurora is eager to start the progressive delivery of the sport plan in 2016 and make Aurora a model for sport organization and cooperation for years to come. Thank you for the opportunity to present tonight and for your continued support of sport and recreation in Aurora. Thank you very much, Mr. Kimmer. Council, we just need a motion to receive Mr. Kimmer's presence. <coughs> Councillor Thompson, second. Councillor Humphreys, thank you very much. We don't do a um, uh, question and answer on this one. So thank you, sir. We appreciate you. you coming up. Next up, we have Mr. Hurd. Mr. Hurd, mind you, name, address in five minutes, sir. My name is uh, David Hurd, 15 Ransom Street, uh, Aurora. Uh, proud 50-year uh, <clears throat> resident Aurora. You probably know, I've said this so many times, that podium my family dates back here in Aurora to the early 1800s, proudly buried at the Aurora Cemetery with the flurries and the Dones. First time in my life, since I was probably 17, I'm actually nervous standing here at the podium. Well, I've got butterflies in my stomach. I do historical walking tours, doors open, 56 people showed up this year. Uh, Spirit Walk this year, we raised $1,500 for charity, for the Rise and Shine, et cetera. Um, I've never been nervous during that stuff. And I think it's because, I think I'm still kind of in shock from the last budget meeting I attended. Um, this council made a commitment to take ownership of the Aurora Archives. This council made a commitment to bring a curator on board to bring history to Aurora. And I must say, I have been through so many incidents in my passion for the history in this town over the last, say, decade of exclusion, trying to kick down that door and share the passion and the new information I found out about our town. It is an absolute honor and a pleasure over this past little while to be working alongside Shauna White on the Sports Aurora display that's in there, the, the Sports in Aurora, helping her with artifacts and research. You know, it's been an honor to, to consult with her and, and bounce ideas off her. Um, she helped make the Spirit Walk this year a little bit better. And it was an honor on Saturday to, to bust our heinies. You know, I've been working on this for a while, wait, waiting for a good cause and awareness, and it turned out, let's do a little pop-up shop at the Aurora Armory. Hardly any social media, a little bit of help from the Aurora newspaper, some signs on a street corner, and two people with passion for the stories of Aurora, because we wanted to engage the people that attended the armories, and... Uh, let them see those beautiful pictures and, and pump the town. Opened at 10, closed at 4. The traffic didn't stop all day. We raised $540 for the museum collection. 
That's pretty awesome. What, it, what I don't think is awesome is people coming to this podium saying they, they want more revenue because they lost a room. Excuse me? We lost a building. Over $3 million was raised for the Church Street School to be a museum. And people have now come to the podium and said, we lost a room? I, I can't tell you how shocked I am. There was so much effort and donations made and public efforts for that to become a dream come true. And I'm sorry, I'm not buying any of the stories that somebody dropped the keys on the table and walked away. This needs to be looked into. How that building suddenly stopped being a museum when there was scaffolds up on the wall and a big sign outside that said, soon to be the home of the Aurora Heritage Center. And then, I've said it before at the podium, poof. No, I'm sorry. That building, the museum shouldn't worry about losing a room. The museum should be expanding into that building. And being able to do what it's already doing really well that Sean is doing awesome at. Digging into stories that can make Aurora, like really make a shine through storytelling. One minute, Mr. Hurd, please. Thank you. And she should be the one that also should be embraced. Other people, other organizations come here and tell you what they want to do for Aurora. They're a national historic site. I'm talking about promoting Aurora, keeping the money in Aurora. And you know what? You hand over to Sean and give her more space that Aurora Pet Cemetery. That also is a national historic site. You tell me one other pet cemetery in Canada, I know there's one in Goodwood, that has an RCMP horse buried there that was shipped there from Alberta. If that's not worthy of a story of a national designation, I don't know what is. Sell the history of Aurora, bring the museum space back to the, what it was supposed to be, and you know what? If alternative plans have to be made for others, then so be it. But that was a heritage building, and that's what the public expected. And uh, I'm going to continue to hold your feet to the fire on that one. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Daw, members of council. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. <coughs> well, well done on the timing, sir. Well done on the timing. Well, thank you. Bob, Bob McRoberts, please. Mr. McRoberts, name, address, and you have five minutes, sir. Mr. Mayor, councillors and staff, my name is Bob McRoberts. I live at 76 Catherine Avenue. I attended the operational budget meeting of November 16th and am concerned by some things I heard that evening. My thoughts might help you with allocating money and or the cultural precinct decisions. In 2013, the Aurora Historical Society sold the Aurora collection of over 16,000 artifacts to the town for a dollar with the hope that its contents would have a better opportunity to flourish with respect to care, maintenance, display, and exhibitions for the citizens of Aurora to appreciate and have access to. A top-notch curator is in place. Many positive wheels have begun to spin. At last Monday's budget meeting, when several of you stated or implied that a different, more appropriate room might be found elsewhere for the museum, my heart fluttered. One might think you meant moved to a different building, but I hope you meant moved into more rooms in the building than it's already in. The Aurora Museum moved into the Church Street School in 1981. 24 years later, the collection was moved into a climate-controlled space at Alatron, a local industry, for four years of storage while the Church Street School was renovated to become the Aurora Heritage Center, the home of the expanded museum. Assumptions were made, magic happened, and the cultural center opened with the collection all in boxes in the basement. The Heritage Center was built with climate-controlled storage on both floors. The whole building was intended to be the museum with its special archival storage spaces and special lighting for displays and exhibitions. 
Aurora Historical Society staff assisted the town applying for a grant for a heritage center. The town accepted a $750,000 grant from the federal government to be spent on a heritage center. The Historical Society paid over $548,000 from its coffers to go to a building, a heritage center. Board member Bar uh, Margaret Brevik bequeathed $200,000 towards the building becoming a heritage center. A number of other citizens also made donations to this cause in lesser amounts. Even $1,000 came out of my po family's pocket to help build a heritage center. With this history and commitment in the 129-year-old building, how could any of you possibly contemplate moving the museum elsewhere? In fact, the museum should occupy more space, more than just one room of the building. When I was doing research for my Aurora history book, I could do so for only a few hours on Fridays. Currently, the public and even the curator can access the archives only on Mondays. Not very accessible. Artifacts are being stored in the basement, in the old library, and in the armory. Not very practical. The Aurora Museum and Archives needs more space, and the space should be in the Heritage Center. The town-operated, re-energized museum and archives certainly seems to be having a challenging first year. Here's what I suggest as a partial solution create an enclosed walkway, an actual hallway between the Church Street School and the Aurora Centennial Library. This would satisfy the cultural center's need for breakout rooms and provide them with more space for exhibits and programming. It would also provide more accessible space for the museum storage and enable the museum to incorporate more space within the Church Street School to help it fulfill its mandate. Hopefully this option will be considered and embraced within the cultural precinct plans and the long-awaited, long-lasting decisions you will be making in the near future for this historic heart of Aurora. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. McRoberts. Council, may I have a motion to receive all the presentations, please? Councillor Thompson, Councillor Tom, all in favor? Contrary? That is carried. Thank you very much. Okay. Council, we'll uh, get into the consideration of items at this point, and Councillor Thompson? Mayor Dad, may I just ask a question? I'd like to make a motion with regards to the sports plan. When would be the most appropriate time? Uh, let me go to um, Mr. Moyle first, and then we'll come back. Um, We've got three items on right now, so we can come back to that after. Thank you. Mr. Mark. <coughs> Thank you, Your Worship. Um, the Treasurer has supplied some additional information to members of Council uh, and details of the operating budget. It is in the same form as the information provided last year, uh, but the bottom line, of course, is different. This proposed budget would see the lowest tax increase in over a decade at 1.8%. This budget is only possible because Council, at your meeting in September, provided clear direction on a budget goal. Your staff have delivered on that goal by creating a draft budget which ensures that Aurora is living within its means. An example of, of this is a manner in which staffing costs have been contained in this budget. You will recall that staff had originally forecast 11 new hires in 2016 during your budget discussions last year. This budget, if approved, will see zero new hires for 2016, despite the growth and demand for services. I should add that York Region Police <clears throat> are asking the Police Services Board to hire, I believe, 20 new staff. The Fire Service, as well, is looking at hiring more staff, building a training center, and a new headquarters. The town employee headcount, however, remains unchanged, despite the demands of a growing community. So you may ask, how was this done? Well, your directors, I believe, should be commended for finding efficiencies, reviewing their processes and practices, and utilizing existing capacity within the, the existing staff complement. There have also been pressures on this budget, as you've seen from the documentation provided by the Treasurer. You will note in Mr. Elliott's summary that material costs, asphalt, cement, pipes, and so on, have increased by 12%. Utility costs, heat, light, and power, 
have increased by 13%, and transfer to capital reserves, which is a good thing, have increased by 9%. There have been savings as well. Bank charges are being reduced by 32%. Our printing costs have been reduced by 21%. Debt payments down 83%. And software licenses and maintenance down by 11%. To summarize, the proposed budget meets Council's direction by delivering services and programs to a growing community at the lowest tax increase in over a decade. It is a budget that maximizes efficiencies, controls costs without reducing service levels. Mayor Dahl, members of council, we're here to answer any questions and look forward uh, to uh, a recommendation for uh, final consideration by council on December the 8th. Uh, also as well, included in your package are a number of memos. At the previous meeting, council sought some clarification on uh, a planning and development issue, which is noted in your agenda. Uh, and the Parks and Recreation Services uh, memo was included. Uh, as well, uh, and if there are, again, any other questions or comments relating to the information provided by the treasurer to you, uh, I'm sure he and members of uh, the management team would be pleased to answer those questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moyle. And just before I go to any members of council with respect to the issues, I'll just ask Mr. Elliott if he has any general comments at this point. Mr. Elliott. Uh, not really at this point. Uh, I think that the information has been provided uh, Council is in a terrific position to uh, make some decisions and, uh, and address the issues that are on the agenda tonight, including some of those that uh, have been spoken to by the uh, members of the public. Thank you, Mr. Elliott. Council, if someone will put item seven on the floor, which is to receive for information. <coughs> Councillor Thompson, Councillor Maracas, comments or questions on this particular item? Any comments for staff on this? Councillor Maracas? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I guess I'm the one that asked for how much was, you know, how much time and, and resources are put into the into the you know, our rezoning and, and zoning amendment bylaw review. Um, I guess it just goes to show that we do put a lot of time and effort and resources in it. So I'd like to think that most people would adhere to our zoning bylaws. That's my statement. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other comments on this particular item? In that case, all in favor of receipt, please. Contrary, that is carried. Thank you. Second item, someone put that on the floor, please. Again, receive for information. Councilor Maracas, second, please. Councilor Humphreys, speakers to this one, which is uh, a question, was a question of Mr. Downey. Comments or questions on this, please. Councilor Gardner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Could someone tell me what a consultant for a contract for outings is? I'm sorry? What a contract for outings is? Mr. Downey? Certainly, Mr. Mayor. Uh, contract for outings is uh, with the relation to the seniors. Those are um, outings that we provide to the seniors um, um, for their bus trips and, uh, um, and trips outside of the senior center. Thank That's you. Okay. Follow up. So the the amount of money the seniors pay for their outings does not cover the cost? To you, Mr. Mayor, no, on the contrary, we actually do make a small profit off the outings uh, with the seniors. So the revenues for uh, the seniors um, exceed the cost of the outings. Sorry, Mr. Downey, I must be very slow tonight. Um, could you just say again what a contract for outings is? Certainly. Um, if uh, we're planning a trip uh, to Toronto to see uh, a show, um, we contract uh, tickets for the show, we contract the bus, we contract perhaps with a restaurant. Um, so um, all of those are, um, uh, are then um, put together as a package and the seniors then pay um, the town for that particular outing. So we contract out for those outings. Mr. Downey, perhaps you could be uh, viewed as an event planner? Uh, to a degree, I, I suppose you're right. Councillor Gartner. Thank you. But the bottom three, Mr. Mayor, the bottom line is that the money the seniors pay does not cover all of the expenses. No, he, Mr. Downey said the exact opposite. We make a uh, I profit. know that, but I don't know why we have a, a budget line item for this then. Okay, I can continue with Mr. Downey later. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments or questions for Mr. Downey on this particular item? <coughs> all in favor of receipt, then please. Contrary, that's carried. Thank you very much. The last one is uh, a recommendation from Mr. Elliott. Someone care to put that on the floor, please? 
Councillor Thompson, thank you. Is there a second? Councillor Kim, thank you very much. Speakers to this one, please. Council, you will, uh, this is the receipt for information. Remember, we tabled this as well as the Historical Society budget last week. Last week? Uh, 16th, yes. Yeah, time flies when you're having fun. Uh, so if there's no comments or questions on this, we, will, we can receive this and then we'll go to the two items that were tabled last week. All in favor, receipt then, please. Contrary? That is carried. Thank you very much. Mr. Clerk, you just want to help us? We're not, uh, we don't do tabling motions. Very often. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I would suggest at this time it would be in order to uh, make a motion to take item five from the table. And after that, assuming that passes, then we could actually deal with item five uh, in the motion which was pending last week. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Council, catch that? May I please have a motion to remove from the table then? Councillor Peary, thank you. Councillor Tom? Is this, is this removing uh, five, the Historical Society and the... Uh, They're both coming this back at this point, this Mr. Clerk. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. Certainly, if you want to take both items off the table, then we would deal with them in order. So the motion to take from the table would be item 5 and 6. Right now it's item 5, which is yep. the Cultural Centre. Yes, we could. And then the Historical Society was... Yep. Pardon me? Both okay. Sure. So we're, we're already taking both from the table at this point. Councillor Tom, thank you. All in favour? Contrary? carried uh, mr. clerk and back to item at this point item five yeah yep, please uh, thank you uh, through mr. mayor when uh, this matter was tabled at last week's budget committee meeting the following motion was pending that the 2016 operating grant to Aurora Cultural Center in the amount of four hundred and twenty thousand dollars be approved so that's the motion that's pending uh, and is now being uh, considered okay so that would go then to Councillor Humphreys is a mover <coughs> Councillor Humphreys Thank you, to you, Mr. Mayor. As uh, discussed last week, um, you know, in terms of the ask, uh, the Aurora Cultural Center has um, been uh, shown that uh, the requirement to fulfill um, a little bit of, of the revenue that they had lost through the loss of the room that is um, part of our historical society, which, by the way, I totally advocated for and still do uh, in terms of having our our uh, historical, I'm sorry, our museum grow. It's uh, our love for sure. But in terms of what the impact was to the cultural center and um, the efforts brought forward in, in terms of uh, providing uh, programming and just plain simple loss of, of space, revenue space, um, that this amount of uh, 420,000 be approved rather than the um, 377 of the year before. Thank you. Other speakers to the motion, please. Councilor Marakas. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I said it the other week, uh, I'll say it again. I, I, I won't be able to support the, the motion that's in front of us. Um, however, I, I would be able to support the recommendations that we just received for information from staff. Um, I, I wouldn't have an issue with, with uh, allowing for the, the growth and for the 1.8, which would give us that 16, uh, point, oh, 16,900, which would bring them to 393.9. Uh, but I won't be able to support 420. Thank you, Councillor Marcus. Other speakers, please. Councillor Peary, Councillor Tom. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you. Uh, I agree with Councillor Marcus. I think it's only fair to treat this organization like we treat all others, and I think we'll be needing to treat the Historical Society as well. If on a whole, throughout the municipality, we've looked at the same uh, assessment growth, um, and, a lot, and a lot of that to the, to the respective departments, I think we should be doing the same thing. Uh, I understand that we've taken space away um, from from the cultural center, but if you look around the table and what our directors have had to do, they're not you know making easy decisions either. They've made some very tough decisions to move forward, and we appreciate what they've done for us. Uh, I expect that the uh, cultural center will will be doing the same thing, um, and I wish them as much success as as you know, they've had in the past to continue in the future. Um, I always wish them more success now I'm thinking about it. So I think they, they, um, they warrant some extra funding just based on the size of the municipality growing, but anything over and above that, I, I'm not in favor of. 
Councillor Tom. Thank you, Mayor Daw. And um, my question, I don't remember, I recall, if when, this, when, this, when we tabled this last week, when the motion that appears before us for the 420 was uh, put on the floor. Uh, uh, Councillor Humphreys, did you put that on the floor? Is that who? So may I ask, oh, moved by Councillor Humphreys right there, sorry. Um, so what, what is, if I might ask, how did you come to the 420? I mean, is it just a, was that a round number? I mean, it's not the full ask, so I just, uh, because I guess, you know, we've received information about the, you know, the growth uh, plus the inflation uh, at 16,900. And even when you take into account last year where we gave a zero a zero percent increase, um, you know, even if you did it for two years, it would still only equal 410,800. So it's perhaps a bit more uh, an idea of where the extra, you know, what, what the difference is between my number and that would be, and how you came up with 420. Councillor Humphreys. Thank you to you, Mr. Mayor. Um, that amount came from just a, the historical loss of revenue from the programs itself uh, and the fact that um, there was no cost of living increase last year and in terms of, uh, of what was granted to other departments in our organization. So for me, it was just to look at the historical um, cost of uh, loss of the programming. And in addition to that, and I meant to say it earlier, Mr. Mayor, was that uh, Council Mark has made a good comment that we would grant this amount of money if, if we were around, you know, uh, obviously if, uh, if the majority uh, believes that that's the right thing to do, but that, um, that the cultural center would come back and work with um, the town and see if there's other ways to make up for that loss of programming uh, revenue in terms of some of the great ideas they have moving forward to try to, to uh, generate and recoup from that, that loss of the room. So we were going to do a checkpoint first quarter, second, second quarter, to see if, if that in fact can be reduced further to be more in line with the, uh, the other parts of, um, of, of the grants that we're providing for other business, lines of business. Councillor Kim? Uh, pardon me, Councillor Tom. Th Excuse thanks, me. or Councillor Humphreys. I gotta, be, I gotta be more formal. Um, so I agree that, um, you know, the cultural, everyone agrees that the cultural center is a very valuable part of our community and they, they give us a great, I don't even like to call it a service. It is, it adds to our community in ways that uh, it's hard to, to measure. But, but I also agree that, uh, you know, we've asked our, our staff to be, you know, we've asked them to be tough uh, this year on, on budget and, and they've done an excellent job in meeting those requests. I think all around the table would commend staff on their ability to, to help us meet that 1.8 target. So, and I'm, again, I'm a, I, I don't quite, I don't think I can quite wrap my head around uh, the 420,000 number myself because I feel, uh, you know, I, I guess I'd be more comfortable with the following, and this is just a comment at this point. You know, we've, we've indicated that 16,900 would be one year's growth plus inflation. Because we, we froze their budget in the last year and gave them no such uh, 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 growth and in inflation from the year before, my numbers come out to 410,800, which gives growth and in inflation for this year, growth and in inflation for last year, I would be comfortable with 410,800. I'm not comfortable with 420,000. Councillor Kim. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, it's, you know, sometimes, you know, people view whether to um, offer a grant or or some source of funding to various organizations, whether it be the cultural center or, or other town uh, organizations by you know, their popularity or the level of usage. Uh, and that's, it's hard to determine. Uh, I personally uh, have, uh, or my family have leveraged the cultural center and, and find value in it and others uh, may not. Uh, regarding the, the, uh, the, the proposed uh, 420,000 be approved. Uh, I can't support that, um, but I can support it if we can all agree with a funding source for it uh, that will not impact uh, the existing uh, tax pressure of 1.8%. Uh, so I'm open to it. Uh, it all depends on where it's coming from. Uh, with that said, I do feel comfortable with the 393.9 uh, with uh, just adding the share of inflation and growth for uh, 2016. Uh, so I'm open to that, um, to both options. However, uh, I s suspect it's going to be unlikely that we're going to be able to agree upon a, uh, 
a funding source to, to make 420 happen. Uh, so for now, uh, unless someone uh, finds a, or staff finds a, an appropriate funding source that won't, that won't uh, impact our, our existing uh, pressures, uh, I'm fine with the 393.9. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. And, sorry, and uh, as a transitional uh, move towards, you know, like I said last year or last week, to a more uh, uh, partnership-like uh, structure where we can, uh, you know, through our finance advisory committee, uh, with all our organization, have some kind of a, at least a three-year uh, long-term planning so that uh, we don't have to do this year after year and that uh, the staff can, can plan uh, midterm. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kim. Councillor Thompson. Thank you, Mayor Daw. And just to follow along those same lines, so I do want to get a sense of uh, the impact of the increases. So perhaps through you to uh, to Mr. Elliott, Mr. Elliott, if we were to approve the 420,000, which to my calculations is an increase of 43,000, um, would that result in an increase in the overall budget rate from 1.8 percent to whatever, even though it would be minimal, I guess 1.81? Mr. Elliott. Through you, Mr. Chair, I was, uh, I walked in the room tonight uh, having had a number of conversations. I think in, uh, in the interest of trying to maintain the 1.8, uh, staff would be able to find the, the 16.9 and the 3,000 that's in my memo within the existing budget, but to step it up to two years worth, as it were, from Councillor Tom, uh, would pose uh, some some challenges again we've uh, all of the directors have uh, all kinds of things that we wish were in our budgets but are not and uh, to find 20 might be one thing but to find 40 or 60 is uh, is uh, challenging so I would suggest that if council was uh, stuck on the 1.8 that we would draw from tax rate stabilization we would go to finance advisory committee to work with these organizations for multi-year plans and uh, that could happen. Yes, Thank you. So just to be clear, uh, the increase that you've noted in your memo would not result in any increase because through your conversations, you feel that it can be found internally, but anything greater than that amount would cause a tax hit. Thank you. Any other speakers for the first time, please? Councillor Gartner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm looking at the information from the Cultural Centre there. They felt that they would need almost $434,000 from the town to fulfill their mandate. Uh, so what we're willing to give with the cost of inflation and growth is $17,000. Um, I, I can't agree to that. And I also can't agree <laughs> to the figure that Councillor Humphreys suggested. I'm willing to go maybe halfway at 30,000. Any other speakers for the first time? Councillor uh, Abel, excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, and I'm wondering if I could ask uh, the, the Secretary if could post these findings just so I could illustrate a couple of points. Sure. That's the last one, please. Okay. Well, we're in a bit of a conundrum here, and uh, we, we value a service, and and it also, uh, with our cultural precinct uh, and our facility um, repurposing study, we've sunk $120,000 in consultant fees. And we're moving very quickly in that, that approach. Uh, and, and the pillar, uh, the cornerstone of, the, of it all is, is our cultural center, uh, along with the library. And, and, and our town park will be significant as well. But the role that the uh, cultural center is going to play is significant. Um, we have taken a room away for, for them to get revenue, and uh, that's a topic for some discussion, but I mean, they can rent that room and make some revenue, but they don't have that available to them, and they've been frozen on their, um, on their, uh, on their ass for the last two years. So I just wanted to show, this is from a financial comparison that was presented to me from the Cultural Centre. And the town's revenue for the last six years have increased by $11 million, which represents 42%. Parks and Recreation has increased by almost 1.8, and that's a, that represents 112%. Library has increased its budget almost a million dollars. And you can see the Cultural Center is at 11%. And if I could ask Linda to move to the next slide. 
uh, if we kind of put this on uh, a graph, it kind of shows that the cultural center has, is flatlined, whereas the uh, parks and rec and uh, the library are increasing. And that's with tax assessment. Thank you very much. And Linda, if I could just get the last one on that chart. So what we're trying to, to show is, is, is that if everyone's getting increase for growth, it would be fair that um, that cultural center would be part of that. It seems that every department and everyone's getting that growth assessment increase and the cultural center has not. So I think we've all agreed here that a growth factor should be put into this. I'm trying to factor in the lost revenue, but that's not getting a lot of traction, but I think that's significant. In the presentation last week by the cultural center, they showed what they were getting in revenue from that room and how it had uh, frozen their ability to increase their revenues. Uh, and Linda, I just asked for the last one. It's on a separate page that was presented um, from our director of parks and service on the museum uh, budget. I had asked uh, Mr. Downey if, if he could present the museum. And uh, you can ignore my, my little notes there, but uh, on the left corner is the 2015 adjusted budget of 80, 5,000, and then on the 2016 requested budget is 137. So this is uh, Mr. Downey's department. He's looked after it. It falls under his jurisdiction. But it does show that that's a significant increase at 61%. So some departments are getting more, and the museum is a very valuable thing, and I'm not knocking it. I think it's great that Mr. Downey has been able to do within his budget in his department. But I think we've just forgotten about the cultural center. So I'm really just saying, what's fair for all, all our facilities and everything under our jurisdiction. And so we should move forward in that regard. Um, thanks, Linda. That is, uh, I'm in support of the full ask, but I know council uh, won't do that. Uh, we're looking at 420 as Councillor Humphreys. I would support that. Um, <coughs> and uh, I think we're close to the amount. And I'm, I'm supportive, as you can tell, for anything that's coming forward. So. Um, I think their presentation and their budget and their transparency is exemplary. Uh, we know exactly what we're getting for all that value. Um, and I'm not knocking the museum, but we don't know what is there. And there's a huge increase there. Uh, the library is, is an excellent facility, and it seems to go along with the growth. Um, and, and really, those are my comments. Let's, let's be fair. And, and that was all uh, my discussion is for this time, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Abel. Um, I think everyone sitting around the table has been supportive of the cultural center and I can certainly remember back to some discussions we had about four years ago. Um, testy discussions one might say at that point. And it's interesting because one of the, one of the things that I used as, as part of my uh, support for the cultural center was the work that they had done with the schools at that point and if I had my timing correct. Uh, the high schools were on a work to rule and um, so the cultural center graciously hosted the um, grade 12 art class and I, I thought that was a fabulous opportunity for the grade 12 art class uh, and it's one of the, certainly one of the things that made um, <coughs> that enhanced my understanding of why we should support the cultural center and, and the value that it was bringing to the town but notwithstanding that um, and, and that's the service that, that the town provided to the, to the Board of Education. Um, and I've had this discussion with some folks at the, uh, the Cultural Center, is that that's the service that they provide no charge to the, to the school system. And that's, that's great, but we can't go to the school. When we had our public planning meetings at, Saint, at Maximilian Colby, uh, we had to pay to use, that, to use their facility. Um, that's a source of revenue to them. Uh, and I, I think that, quite frankly, one of the areas that the Cultural Center should be looking at is going to the, to the schools and say, okay, well, you know, we host this great program. We think that there should be some compensation back to us. I, th I think it also needs to be pointed out that when the, uh, the contract discussions happened and started back in the, uh, the first part of 2013, was that the uh, Aurora Room was to come out of service for the Cultural Center and into the service of the museum starting... January the 1st, I think. Mr. Downey, is that correct? January the 1st, 2014? Is that correct? 
Uh, and that actually didn't really, except for what, perhaps a month of 2014 or two months, Mr. Downey? I don't remember. You, Mr. Mayor, there was a delay between uh, January of 2014 and the, and the uh, first display, which was the Aurora 150 display. Okay. Um, so we had a bit of a delay. There were a few months in 14 it was available as well. So there, there was a bit of a, a delay in terms of, of that. So the Aurora room didn't come into the service of the museum uh, until sometime after what was originally planned. So I think that, that part of our recognition has to be that it didn't come out of service as, as, as quickly as was envisioned in the contract. <coughs> I can't support the amount that's on the floor. I don't think it's supportable. Uh, and how we got there, I think, is, uh, is one issue. I just can't support that amount going forward. I can support the amount that Mr. Elliott has suggested. That's is something that Mr. Elliott and, and Mr. Moyle and I discussed a couple of weeks ago, or a week ago, whenever it was, in terms of, well, why, why not look at an inflation number and the growth number? We do that for the library. We do that for the rest of the town. I was perfectly in favor, completely in favor, of providing that to the Cultural Center and to the Historical Society as well. Uh, and uh, I know a couple of us had the same thoughts that Mr. Elliott mentioned, is I think that to go, and I believe Councillor Kim mentioned it tonight, uh, to take the, the Cultural Center budget, the Aurora Historical Society budget, maybe even the library budget, to the, to, uh, the Financial Advisory Committee and see how we can work this into a long-term plan. I tried to, uh, to look at a long-term plan for the Historical Society. I think the first year we were elected last term and it, it was not successful. I think that's the way to go forward. So I can't support this. I will certainly support uh, the number that Mr. Elliott gave it. Uh, so for the second time, I have Councillors Peary and Maracas and Councillor Humphrey. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, to Mr. Downey, um, how much of our leisure guide is currently um, directed towards cultural programming? Through you, Mr. Mr. Mayor, I, ha I don't have that percentage off the top of my head. We do have cultural programming within the guide. Um, uh, I'd say it probably represents maybe 10 or 15% of the overall programming that we provide. Uh, and is there an opportunity to maybe think about creating, um, or I guess before I get that far, revenue-wise, is that um, process something that is cost-neutral? Do we lose money or do we make money? on those guides? So you, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, we make money on all our cultural programming that I'm aware of. Uh, sorry, just, just the guides. Please. Just the one that's within the guides? No, sorry. Oh, I apologize. The, the guide itself. The guide itself? The guide itself is cost neutral. The sponsorship pays for the printing of the guide, if that's what you're asking me. That is what I'm asking, and, and I think maybe there's an opportunity to expand that. Um, and either have it be a, a revenue base for us, but I think there might be an opportunity as well, um, working with the cultural center, working with, uh, with the museum, if we were to produce a secondary guide, dealing strictly with, with culture or, or something to that effect, something more robust, there might be an opportunity to, to bring in a little bit more money, and that money could perhaps be used to supplant um, what, what the cultural center is, is, would like to have and, and what we're able to do. I, I understand and I would expect that they probably already do something, but you know, if the material is out in, in two locations and we're able to bring in some extra funding, maybe that's a, a, another way to go. Um, but like I said, I, I think um, we're looking for 3.4 um, increase. We could have looked at um, a 1.8, which is what we're looking at across the town. Um, and that would only get that would get us about ten thousand dollars less. So, on the whole, I, I I think we should be looking towards the three point or the the sixteen thousand nine hundred dollar um, increase. And through you to Mr. Clerk, um, can we just make, change that number as an amendment, or we can do that. Uh, thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, yes, it would be a mere amendment because it's uh, not directly opposed to it. It's just changing the amount within the main motion. That's it. So, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make an amendment. Okay, I'm going to come back to you. I do have two other speakers at this point, then I'll come back. <coughs> I, okay. Councilor Marrakis, Councilor Humphreys. Thank 
you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, through you to, um, I guess, Mr. Elliott, uh, grants traditionally uh, from the provincial level, federal level, even municipal level, are they subject to cost of living increases or growth increases? Uh, not for growth increase through you, Mr. Chair. Not for growth increases. Uh, sometimes they're indexed, but most program most grant programs are um, uh, not on a subscription basis, but on a on an application base each time. And so you uh, apply for a, a grant to fund a specific program, and uh, you may or may not win. Um, it, it's like fishing. Uh, <laughs> and so no, there's uh, there's not the. Uh, the federal gas tax is something that is indexed, uh, but it's only indexed every three years. It's kind of interesting. And so uh, on, a, on these cultural grants, it's, it's hit and miss as to whether they increase or not. Thank you. Um, I guess um, when I look at it is, is, is I think at the end of the day, um, Mr. Mayor, you made the, the suggestion, and I think a couple of us have already said that I think it, it's uh, something that we need to look at moving forward and come up with a, uh, a better strategy, how we, we actually deal with this. And I think we're going through some growing pan pains right now this year as far as the budget process, and we've worked, the Finance Committee has done an excellent job as far as the process for the budget, and I think for next year we should look at, as you stated, uh, you know, possibly maybe merging certain groups together and looking at how we fund them and come up with that multi-year format that, that would allow us to, with the Cultural Center, give it a grant and have a number and maybe it stays at that number for four years or five years. And that way we, we don't come here and go through the same exercise year after year. And I think that's a better process. And I think we will get there. And I think that everyone this year, from our staff uh, to all our groups to, to everyone does an excellent job, but I think everyone is feeling that pressure and I think we're gonna have to deal with that pressure this year and just have to swallow it and take it and we can make the process at the end of the day better for everyone, uh, you know, for the residents, for the taxpayers, everyone involved and it just, it will make for a much better process. So um, I'd be fully in support if an amendment came forward and that three, like I said, that 393, I would be able to support. Thank you, Councillor Maracas. Councillor Humphreys. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I, and I really appreciate Councillor Maracas's perspective, and I'm, I'm totally aligned to that. I think it's the right way to go, long-term long planning. And, and then all the you know, different organizations know what they have. There's no anticipation or you know, they, they understand they can build around that. My, my concern is just what's happened over the last two years for this particular group and, um, you know, sort of, that they've taken and that they're running into reserves for a third year now and I'm, I'm worried about that. I'm worried about the investment already placed behind um, the cultural center and, and the work done and just really worried about what's gonna happen at the end of the year. And that's why I was hoping that we can do this with a, perhaps a bit of a caveat there that says, you know, we'll start with this, let's meet quarterly, let's see how they're doing, let's see there's other programming opportunities, you know, charging the school boards, all these things that I, I know I know that the board's willing to do. It's just um, the risk at this point of going into another year of reserves really scares me. And I don't think any other organization is doing that. And I'm just afraid of that right now. So I thought we could have done that approach with a, with a checkpoint once a quarter would be a, a great way to, to kind of move forward. Councillor Peary, his promise back to you. I'd like to make an amendment that the 420,000 be altered or amended to uh, 393,900. Seconded by Council Maracas. What, do you wish to speak to your amendment? I, I would only state that, you know, we're, we're talking about going up in money and, and I think this is a fair increase, but when the center was, was first um, thought of and imagined, it was supposed to be cost a recovery basis. Um, there wasn't supposed to be more and more every year. Um, that's changed. I'm okay with that change, um, but I think I think the the funding amount should go up by the the amount of residents. So that's fair. I've got Councillor um, I think Abel Thompson. Oh, hold well, on. Okay, I can't remember that far. Councillor Abel. Thank you, and and I just wanted to let those know that uh, I couldn't speak a second time uh, because we were going to let uh, Councillor Perry have his uh, amendment. And speaking to the amendment, I, I still don't feel it's adequate for the ask. 
Uh, all the other departments have fulfilled their needs with their ask. Um, I, I, I can't support it. I, I, would like to, I would like to support a larger increase. Um, and I think that we could find the money uh, from other departments. It's the, the comment from Council Maracas that we should put in the amount of money that they're going to have for the next four years is exactly what we asked for in the service agreement to be overturned. We would like to see them come with the budget first. They could easily find sponsorship and maybe another funding mechanism might be realized and, not, and come to us and not ask for more money might be less than what we wanted so I would, I would caution against that I think the planning ahead is a good idea but not fixing a budget increase every year that's that's what we had before um, and and I think we can do better with the oversight by asking each organization coming forward um, and, and I don't know um, what more to say uh, there was another comment about um, putting all the I think the mayor said the cultural center, the library, and uh, the, the historical uh, society together. I would, I would say the museum belongs in there, uh, Mr. Mayor, to, to put them all together. And I'm, I'm not sure it was you that mentioned it. It might have been another council. So, so <laughs> uh, just back to the amendment, please, Councilor Abel. I, I will, con I will uh, clarify my comment after you can, speak. Can we? Um, well, I haven't finished my comment. Well, you, I'll, I'll get back to that when we get back to the amendment. Could I? Um, could you give me a breakdown again, please, because I was late on where that figure came for 393. It's in our memo. It's in the memo. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Mr. Elliott, can you uh, quickly certainly, reprise? Certainly. As uh, in, in developing uh, the 1.8% uh, percent target, um, we referenced the uh, July to June 12-month CPI for Toronto area is 1.1 from StatsCan. And so that's a standard that we've been using uh, as a reference point as we prepare our budgets. And then the, uh, the growth of the community is 3.4%. And so uh, combining those together uh, is a $16,900 uh, 16, increase. It brings it to 393900 and uh, likewise for the Historic Society. Yes, sir. Um, and the other departments, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, were granted uh, the assessment of 3.4 growth assessment and plus a 1.8? Well, let me draw to your attention that with 1.8%, yes, we had the benefit of 3.4% assessment growth, but we also had to fund the increases in contributions to capital, uh, reductions in hydro interest, and uh, reductions in SUP revenues, as well as other issues throughout the organization. I draw to your attention that the top sheet of your net, of your net budget will show the net budget of each department is essentially the amount of tax that is used to fund those uh, departments. And you can see that for the most part, these are 1%, uh, 2%, 3%. There were some issues that uh, we collaboratively addressed in Parks and Rec, and, uh, and planning services uh, came through uh, with some additional revenue, and so that uh, reduced the pressure in that group. So for the most part, though, we're picking up a 1% increase in our total uh, tax burden, uh, department by department. 1.1 uh, plus 3.4 is 4.5% in excess of these ones. I just point that out for your I'm not reference. sure. I, I, I thank you, Mr. Elliott. I'm, I'm, I am thoroughly confused on that. Um, the, um, and the fact, through you, Mr. Mayor, could you, the director comment on the, the lack of revenue opportunity <coughs> by not having uh, the Aurora Room for their it's, it's revenue sure. generating? Is there any recognition that that exists and why it wasn't factored in? Mr. Elliott, I don't know how much input you have on that. Uh, I don't really have uh, much much to say other than uh, I have, uh, uh, in past years, we've heard that they were bringing on a uh, sponsorship individual who was going to drive sponsorship up. And knowing that we had tight constraints, I, uh, and also uh, past um, uh, inferences from council, uh, both this, this council and past, is that uh, this organization would be expanding its its revenues to match its expanding uh, expenses, 
and so I moved to hold the line. Um, it was then after that that uh, why didn't they get a share of growth and share of inflation like the library did? And so that's why the memo's here tonight. Perhaps my comment from you would be, if I phrase it a little different, if they had four rooms to rent, Mr. Elliott, for revenue opportunities and you took one of those rooms away, would it be a fair comment that they didn't have as much opportunity to create revenue? Um, I'm not going to allow that question, Mr. Elliott. All right. Well, that's fair. what I was looking for, Mr. Mayor. I didn't. Uh, I just. I think it should be acknowledged uh, that apart from the growth, uh, and we are accommodating on that, and I appreciate that. I was just asking council to acknowledge that to compound the predicament is their inability to reach their potential revenue with the sharing of the facility for the museum. And it's not the museum's fault. It's not our fault. It's just that when we're trying to help them balance a budget and a budget request, we should acknowledge that we've taken away that revenue tool. So I think we could do better. That's my comment on the amendment. And uh, I would not vote against it, hoping that uh, I could put a motion forward uh, to go back to where we were from Councillor Humphreys. Thank you, Councillor Abel. I'll just clarify, when I said bring them together, I was simply suggesting that the, uh, they go to the Finance Advisory Committee for a, for a look, not to actually merge them. That wasn't my suggestion. Okay. Councillor Thompson. Thank you, Mayor Daw. Uh, I'll be supporting the amendment, and the reason for it is that I think, you know, we, uh, we engaged in a new budget process this year, you know, through the work of... Uh, the advisory committee and, and staff and camp members of council and stuff, you know, we, we tried something different this year and, and by all accounts, you know, it's working fairly well, but there's still lots to learn of it. And one of the pieces that I've learned from it is that, you know, there's a need to engage, uh, you know, organizations like the Cultural Center and the Historical Society early on in the process and give them some direction, just like staff were given direction. And so the reason I'd support the motion is because I think that if, um, if in the beginning, just like staff were given that direction, that uh, organizations like the Cultural Center and the Historical Society were also given that direction to, you know, budget for growth plus inflation or, or whatever that set number is, we would have ended up at that 393.9 as the base budget and, and we would have moved forward. So, you know, I, I'm happy to support that. Uh, because staff have indicated they're able to uh, find that internally. There's no additional tax pressure, and I think that would have been the base budget had they been part of the process. And so, you know, I welcome that suggestion to um, engage them through the advisory committee and work with them both on multi-year budgeting or at least bring them into the budget process early on. What I think we can do as well is that if this passes, then we can have a conversation around bridging the loss to losing that room. You know, we are all aware of the fact that we have a council contingency fund. It's $35,000. You know, it's within our purview to take a piece of that and give it to the cultural center if we want as a way to blunt the impact to losing that room. That's an option. And I'd rather do them separately um, because I think that the 393 follows the same mandate that we gave to staff. I don't think it's fair of us to, you know, choose a different process for organizations than our own staff. I think Councillor Perry said that, you know, they had their own needs and asks, and some of them they had to put on the sideline to adhere to the budget deliberations or directions, and I think it's the same for everybody. And so that's why I'm happy to support the motion. However, I'm willing to entertain looking at the Council Contingency Fund as a way to blunt the impact after, if this motion passes. Councillor Humphreys, Tom Kim. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I appreciate the comments of Councillor Thompson in terms of uh, funding source for that gap, which is which is encouraging. Uh, I just wanted to clarify something. I think I heard earlier that this organization, uh, the intent was that it would be self-sustaining or recoverable, but that through my investigation over the last four or five years, um, I think that was a comment made that grew and grew and grew, and I don't think it's an actual fact of reality. From my reading in, on on unless I've missed a clause somewhere, which is possible. Um, I heard that, uh, what I understand is that that really wasn't something that was built into the agreements. Thank you. Councillor Tom, Councillor Kim. Councillor Tom. Sorry, I was buried in my numbers. <laughs> um, so, I suppose uh, off the top I should say that I, I kind of wish I made an amendment before Councillor Peary because I would have made it differently. Um, so, I mean, I, certainly I support 
uh, inflation and growth revenue uh, for this year to the cultural center. I think that's, I, on the face of it, I have nothing wrong with the amendment. However, my, my number that I would be more comfortable with, as I mentioned before, was 410,800, which includes growth and inflation from last year as well, because we did, we in fact kept the budget the same from 2013 to 2014, so zero percent. And, and now this year we're talking about giving them growth and inflation to, to make it fair, at least for now, as we figure out the process with the Finance Advisory Committee, as we figure out this, you know, this, this is our first year uh, doing a budget in the way that we're doing it as well. So we're, we're still working out some of the kinks with the pro whole process, and I think it's going to be very positive moving forward. Um, I just think that I'm comfortable recognizing the loss, uh, or sorry, the, the, the lack of uh, growth and inflation that we did not uh, award uh, in the grant last year in this year's grant, meaning that the, that's where I came up with the $410,800 number. It's basically adding the 16009 on top of the 393 And we do have a council contingency fund, and so perhaps we can look at it separately, and if that's the way that, as Councillor Thompson suggested, we could look at it in another way, I think I would be open to that as well. And to me, it's a nice number that we can easily justify uh, to all residents of Aurora by funding the, the growth for last year and this year uh, and, and not impacting the 1.8 that, that we set out to uh, at the beginning of the budget process. So I'm in an interesting situation where I, you know, I support and I don't support the amendment. I support it in the sense that I want to I want to give the cultural center the growth and in inflation for this year, but I also would like to add it uh, uh, for last year as well. So I guess I'll have to vote against it and and hopefully move uh, another number after. That's I guess I'll, I'll have to say at this point. Councillor Kim, Councillor Marcus. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I do believe that this will be a, uh, you know, given the, the quality of the individuals working at the Cultural Center, I do believe that this, this will be a one-time ask. And even uh, with the uh, minusing out the, the room, I do believe that the, the business development manager, and I do believe three to one at the very least, four to one uh, fundraising to uh, the person's salary is a reasonable uh, ratio in terms of f funds being able to be uh, raised uh, versus the salary count, and I think that would more than surpass the uh, the revenues that are missed by the uh, the museum. So I do believe uh, what I'm saying is that this will be a one-time hit in terms of uh, what they're uh, missing out on in terms of revenue. I like the. I'm all in support of the main motion. I'm also in support of the amendment if uh, a reasonable sourcing is, is, is not uh, found. And it's more of a comment. I'd be curious for those who do want the 420 or more, uh, if, if, you, if those councillors have a, uh, some suggestions as to where it could be coming okay, well, from. I, then, but at this uh, point, we're just speaking no. to the amendment. So I, I, I was just curious whether they had any uh, ideas, but in terms of the amendment, uh, I, I'd be all for the amendment. Thank you. Councillor Rackus. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to clear up one thing that Councillor Humphreys mentioned and Councillor Perry mentioned as far as the self-sufficiency. Um, it was stated at that time when the, the center was opening by the mayor at the time and by the treasurer at the time that this would be self-sufficient within five years. I understand that it doesn't say it in any documentation, but that was what was said at the time, and that was what got the buy-in, and I'm not putting words into anyone that was sitting at the table's head at that time, but that, from my understanding, was the buy-in into creating the agreement at that time. So those words were stated. I just wanted to throw that out there. They might not be in official documents, but they were stated. Thank you. Councillor Abel for the second time on the amendment, sir. Well, I just, I, I am compelled to make a brief comment um, on Councilor Maracas and Councilor Humphreys. And uh, after that was stated, there was uh, an agreement for a five-year budget that nowhere represented it uh, self-sustaining. It was actually inflation up. So there is conflicting. There's what was said, and then there's actually what is agreed and written down. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm so pleased to see that there's some acknowledgement at the table that the revenue 
uh, loss from that room is being recognized. So I appreciate Councillor Thompson initiating that, and I've heard it said again. Um, and yes, we can find other ways. And and uh, and if that's the will, I'm all I'll, I'll, I'll favor this. And and uh, not only could we go for the discretion, I, I I would ask other questions on our budget that we might we might be able to find a little bit more money. Uh, if it doesn't equal the full amount that's asked, it, every bit will help. Um, uh, the operation of the cultural center and show support. So, um, I, I wish, uh, I, I think we can put another amendment on after this, Mr. Mayor. Maybe that's what we can do. Mr. Clerk. Uh, thank you, uh, through Mr. Mayor, provided that the next amendment's not contrary to what happens with this amendment, absolutely. If it's just merely a different number, perhaps, that would be in order. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of just adding on taking from another spot and then bringing it back on to the cultural center. Uh, but perhaps that's in an open budget discussion or I, that might be better at that time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If there's any other speakers to the amendment, I'll call the <coughs> vote on the amendment, please. And the amendment is that uh, the, that number from 420 would change to uh, 420,000 to 393,900. Calling the vote on the amendment. All in favor, please. Hands high so I can see them. Contrary. The motion, the amendment, pardon me, carries. Back to the main motion then as amended. Speakers to the main motion. Councillor Abel. It's be second time on the main motion, sir. As amended. As amended. Uh, well, Mr. Mayor, there's a bit of discussion going on about uh, putting the three um, events or three uh, budget items uh, with the Historical Society, the Cultural Center, and, and the library together um, and looking at them in sort of, I would like to expand uh, that thought, maybe it's just my thought, um, that there's a lot of events that we do for the benefit of the town. I, I call it social capital. It's, it's money that we take that costs the taxpayers money for us to provide either events or services such as a library, such as the um, Santa Claus Parade, Rib Fest, all those items that we, we have money that we cost taxpayers money. A lot of it is revenue. Okay, Councillor, but that's not speaking to the motion as amended. Is it not? It sounds like you, you're looking at something totally different, which is fine, but I would suggest that maybe you can converse with the clerk and see how to do that. I, I think I know where you're going with that. All right. I guess maybe it's more for the financial committee. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, can I ask uh, if we could talk about our discretionary fund and putting some funding forward at this time, Mr. Mayor? Mr. Clerk. Uh, thank you, through Mr. Mayor. Uh, you could uh, certainly add a different clause, uh, an, an additional clause to this. I'm just looking for the treasurer for confirmation that, yeah, if you, uh, so leave the main clause, uh, that the operating grant to the Aurora Cultural Center, the amount of $393,900 be approved and then add an additional clause related to that. Councillor? I would add that we, um, we, uh, we add $10,000 from our discretionary fund to help blunt the, the impact of the loss. Sir, a second? second. Councillor Thompson seconding it. Comments or questions on Councillor Thompson's, pardon me, Councillor Abel's amendment. Councillor Tom? Sorry, just for clarification. Councillor Abel, which fund did you mention there? Council just contingency fund? I gotta go to Mr. Elliott to, for the proper word. I, I, I believe the reference was to the $35,000 operating uh, contingency account. Council, uh, uh, council contingency account. It's within the operating fund. Okay. Thank you. Councillor, I got Councillor Thompson, Councillor Perry. Thank you, Mayor Daw. Through you to Mr. Elliott. Mr. Elliott, I just want to confirm that the, there are no other, um, I guess, obligation or requests out of that fund for 2016 at this point in time? Not that I'm aware of, but it's, a, it's important for Council to recognize that in the past it's been $50,000 at the beginning of the year. Last year you had uh, divvied it up a little during the budget, and uh, again, because of the constraint uh, scenarios, it was flatlined at $35,000 to start this year. Absolutely, I understand that, and we always do use it. And so, um, you know, I, I'm comfortable with the 10. I don't want to use it all because I do know there will be other things throughout the year that we look at. Um, 
Uh, my other question through you to Mr. Elliott. And Mr. Elliott, uh, while growth was great this year at 3.4 percent, can you confirm what the number was last year? The, uh, the community growth that occurred during the 14 to 15 year uh, was 1.75. Thank you. And so, you know, to Councillor Tom's point, I think that uh, that's roughly what I was thinking. So when I, when I do the math for myself, um, if, if you account for that growth in inflation number, it's about 10,000. I actually have 11,000 and change, but I think the 10,000 is reasonable. And so uh, I'll support it. Uh, Councillor, I go ahead, Councillor Peary, and then Councillor Tom. This is to the amendment. Thank you. Second Mr. amendment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> It seems to me like it goes in the face of a council contingency fund to be allocating money prior to the year even starting uh, contingencies for something that arises, you know, that we could not have foreseen in the budget, that we couldn't have, have anticipated spending. And now we're effectively um, cutting that funding down because we're anticipating it's all coming from the same spot. Ultimately, our council contingency fund is funded out of the operating budget. Um, you know, we did it for the first time last year to, that I remember. Um, but the more I'm, I'm thinking about it, it just doesn't sit well with me. If we want to make, you, you know, if we want to fund it, we're funding it. But if we're going to fund it from the council contingency fund, we're making it look like we're giving some special, um, you know, fund to, to blunt the costs. And that, to me, isn't something that we should be doing. Um, you know, I, I didn't say anything when we were talking about perhaps putting this motion forward because the motion wasn't before us. And, you know, for me at least, it wasn't uh, in order to be talking about it. But now that it is on the table and in order, it doesn't sit well with me. Um, a contingency fund is and supposed to be, uh, it, it's supposed to be used for something that is unforeseen. We're just taking it out of one pot to put it in another pot right now. Doesn't make sense to me. Um, so I will be voting against this. Councillor Tom. Makes perfect sense to me. Um, I uh, appreciate Councillor Thompson's uh, um, point there, and perhaps I should have looked uh, a bit more into it when I was making my uh, assumptions earlier. But um, if growth and in inflation last year was less, and if it works out to the 11,000 figure that you've suggested, and I have no reason to suggest that it wouldn't, then, uh, yeah, I think that it's at least recognizing that we did flatline them last year and, and recognizing that for this year. And it also doesn't increase the, the, the 1.8 tax rate that we were, uh, we set out at the beginning of the process. So I'll support 10,000 from the council contingency. Councillor Tom, speakers for the first time on the second amendment. Is that contrary? Is that contrary? Is that confusing? Councillor Kim? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as much as I support the Cultural Centre, and I, I do believe that the Cultural Centre will evolve and, and, and have a long and fruitful life. This kind of sounds like Mr. Spock, doesn't it? <laughs> but, uh, sorry. That's what comes out when you don't have a cue card or you don't write notes. Um, but I, I just don't like the source of, of the funding. I, 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 too, believe that the council contingency fund is, I, I consider it as a kind of like a natural disaster relief fund, uh, something, uh, as Councilor Peary stated, was uh, unforeseen. And I suspect there are, there are going to be uh, uh, sources somewhere down the road this year uh, where that funding will come in handy. And given that it's only 35000 I'm hesitant to uh, to use that for an existing organization uh, where, where where this was no surprise to the organization. So I don't think I can support that amendment. Um, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kim. Any other speakers for the first time on the amendment? Already, I'll try to chime in. I don't. I can't support the amendment because I cannot support the funding source. I don't think that um, the, the purpose of the council contingency, as, as both councillors uh, Peary and Kim have stated, uh, is for unexpected, and this is an operating issue. Uh, so I, I, I can't support that. Uh, I, and I, furthermore, I don't think I could support anything else until we look at this through the Finance Advisory Committee and see where we're going with everything. I think we need to do that in order to be um, 
as true to uh, the concept that we've, we've developed and as, as Mr. Elliott and his uh, fellow directors have worked very hard to establish. Any other speakers for the first time? I've got Councilor Maracas. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was not going to weigh in because, I mean, it's pretty much said uh, how I feel. Uh, I'm in agreement with yourself, Councilor Perry and Councilor Kim. Um, I can't support <laughs> the funding source uh, for the 10,000. Um, I, I agree also, I stated it before, This I would prefer to see this uh, work once we're done, finished with this budget, to go to the Finance Advisory Committee, work on strategies moving forward, and look at a better way that we can do this uh, in the coming years ahead. So um, I won't be able to support the amendment. Any other speakers for the first time on this item? In that case, I've got uh, Councillors Peary and Abel for the second time on the amendment. Looks like we finally perfected time travel, Mr. Mayor. We're not funding people last year, so we're going to give them more money next year. Um, I'd like to invite anybody who didn't receive enough money last year to come forward throughout this budget process and invite them here so that we can, again, continue to give them more money next year, regardless of the decision that we made as a whole at the council table at last year's time. Um, Again, that reasoning just doesn't make sense to me. If, we, if it is truly because they're losing a revenue source, I, I understand that. But to fund them because they weren't funded enough last year when it was a council-approved decision, I'm not sure what that says about the decisions we make here at the council table. Um, so again, Mr. Mayor, I will be voting against this. Thank you, Councillor Peary. Councillor Abel, second time. Um, well, Mr. Mayor, a fair comment. Um, through you, uh, could I ask the director if you could tell us, uh, did we spend all that 35000 last year? Mr. Elliott? We need a couple moments. Thank you. Um, the, the cultural center last year, if they had said we're going to lose revenue, I'm sure the council, <coughs> with our constraints, and would have said, you know what, why don't you try it for a year and see what happens? So they have established, documented, demonstrated to this council that that is a revenue source that is lost. It was not calculated in anyone's um, budget going forward except by the cultural center and they presented it to us. And so now we have to find a contingency to pay and, and help blunt that. Um, if, if, it's, if it's the will of those councillors not to give them any money, and, and the reason is it's the funding uh, is inappropriate, then f fair. But in, in my estimation, it, it is for matters like this. We've done it in the past, and uh, we might as well use it. It's for if, if, if there isn't a better um, place to put it than our cultural centre, I'm you know, I, I, it's such a benefit to our community and everything going on, it's a pillar. Um, then I, I don't know where else, why else you would find a reason not to, to help support it. So uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, when do we s expect the financial committee to meet again? Is it after the budget is approved? Yeah, um, Mr. Ali, I can't remember the schedule off the top of my head. <coughs> Through you, I haven't uh, chatted with the chair, but uh, I suspect that it would be in January or February would Thank be our you. next meeting. So, I mean, uh, that's that's an honourable suggestion that we'll take it to the financial committee to resolve how we're going to help out the uh, cultural centre. But it's too late; we've already approved the budget. Um, I think that discussion is done best right here at the council table during budget discussions. Um, so, uh, I, I I'm. I'm hopeful that this is a reason why we would use our contingency fund for exactly these reasons. Uh, I guess um, I should have been a little more aware. Um, it doesn't really matter. It takes a majority to uh, show support. So um, I'm still one that will support this, uh, and I think the funding is appropriate. And, and I'm waiting for their, uh, Mr. Elliott, just if, he could, if he's getting close. Mr. Elliott. Mr. 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 Chair, at, at this point, it looks like we've only uh, committed fifteen hundred dollars of the twenty fifteen council operating contingency. Out of the thirty five. Yes. So the point that we're going to wait and not use ten thousand because we will probably or we should use it later in the year. 
my point best demonstrates that we only used fifteen hundred dollars of it last year so if you're going to use it, use it and show support for something that's very important. And, and, and I'm hoping that uh, we can get a majority to support that. Councillor Thompson. Thank you, Mayor Dow. Uh, Councillor Abel raised a good point. Uh, through you to Mr. Elliott. Mr. Elliott, um, the funds that don't get used in that account then become part of that, our surplus, and I'm assuming we're going to have a surplus. What happens to the surplus typically? The surplus goes back to reserves. Exactly. Usually uh, capital reserves or tax rate state. Thank you very much. And so, you know, I mean, we've had an organization, you know, they've come to us and they say, look at all the great things we do, uh, but we're projecting a shortfall this year. And so we have two choices, either to draw down from our reserves or reduce the programming and services we provide. And so we have the decision before us whether or not, you know, we want to try and help blunt that impact to allow them to continue to do what they do. As you've seen, uh, as, as was brought up previously, not all the funds were la used last year and it rolled into the reserves. You could argue that there's benefit to the community from that, but you could also argue that there's benefit on using that for groups like the cultural center. And I think that's what we have in front of us. It still doesn't make up their total ask. We're still saying to them, they're going to have to make some tough choices about how they want to do their 2016 programming. Um, but at the end of the day, we're, we're trying to work with them to provide the best service to the community. And so I think that uh, um, we've reached a, a happy medium. Nobody's satisfied. <laughs> not not until we've amended the, not until we voted on this one for me uh thank you uh, uh mr mayor strictly speaking under the procedural bylaw only one amendment is allowed on the floor at the time however that would be an amendment to the amendment although i don't encourage them uh it can be done Councillor? I was going to make an amendment. If we want to give them more money, why not use it tomorrow at Council from this year's budget as opposed to dipping into the contingency for next year? Um, that makes more sense financially than it does Venice. It's not an amendment. It was just something that occurred to me based on Councillor Abel's questions. That makes more sense than setting aside money for last year. I got to go to Mr. Elliott. I'm, I'm not, uh, I've, I've sort of lost track of, of some of the conversation. If we're talking about trying to make up for two years of no increase, it might make sense to hit the 2015 contingency account and, and do the 15 increase. And now we've already addressed the, the uh, 16 increase. So I, I, if, if I can rephrase Councillor Peary's amendment, I think it's, the $10,000 that um, <coughs> Councillor Abel put on the floor, that your amendment was $10,000, correct, <coughs> Councillor Abel? Mr. Mayor, it was $10,000 from the Council right. contingency. I think Councillor Counsel, Perry's comment was to take it from the 2015 rather than the 2016. I'm sorry, Councillor? And do it tomorrow because you can't At talk Council. about it. Okay. Right. Mr. Elliott, is, is that uh, clear? I, I can see some, in, in hearing the conversation, I think there's congruence there and, and uh, it would be fine. Take okay. it from the 2015, the extra 10. Okay, so Mr. Clerk, how would we word that? Councilor Perry's amendment uh, to the sorry. amendment. Uh, thank you. Uh, through Mr. Mayor, actually, uh, I would suggest that uh, to achieve that, it would be best to not have this amendment in its entirety and just raise it under new business tomorrow at Council because uh, this committee cannot, uh, I would suggest, make a, a adjustments to Council-approved 2015 budget or make allocations from the 2015. Okay. So that would, re that would require Councillor Abel, I believe, to withdraw his amendment at this point. Would that be correct, Mr. Clerk? And for, for the, I would suggest. They're going to get 10,000 one way or another, right? So, <laughs> Councillor Abel, are you okay with that? There are no, there are no guarantees, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I, I'll be honest. I'll, I'll, I'll withdraw it, and if, if it's okay with uh, Councillor Thompson, it, it, if I can just be clear, we have 33,500 remaining in the contingency fund from 2015. We have five weeks to go before that year is ex expired, so. Mr. Elliott, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Councillor? I'll reserve my comment. I'll, re I'll remove it. Councillor Seconder, is that okay with the second? I'm fine with it. I think that's a great suggestion by Councillor Perry. Okay. So do I. 
Then back to the main motion as amended, please. If any other further comments to the main motion as amended? All in favor then? I'm contrary? That's carried. Thank you. Where are we? Oh, uh, item Mr. six. Mr. Mayor, if I, if I may ask a question through you. It, we, we can still find other places for funding for other, such as cultural center, if we go through our uh, budget. We haven't closed the books on the cultural center. No, we haven't closed the books Thank on Thank you very much. Um, Councilor Abel. Uh, are you still, uh, well, uh, this is uh, the 2016 Historical Society budget, and you moved that, and it was seconded by Councillor Humphreys, and uh, <coughs> so are you still? That, that Can we place an amendment on the floor to change it to 70 as per the memo from? Uh, well, not yet, there isn't. So rate, we have to deal with this motion uh, first. Mr. Clerk, is that correct? Uh, thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, there is this motion pending that the 26 top rating grant to the Aurora Historical Society in the amount of 67500 be approved, but certainly any amendments would be in order. Council? All right, so what's on the floor right now is that the Historical Society budget in the amount of $67,500 be approved. So if someone wants to move an amendment relative to the uh, Councillor Abel and Councillor Thompson? Councillor Abel? Councillor Thompson started uh, the discussion Councilor with Thompson? 70000 so. I'll move the amendment as per uh, Mr. Elliott's uh, memo that says 70500 Second. Councillor Abel. Comments or questions on this? In that case, calling the vote. All in favor? Contrary? That is carried. Mr. Mayor. Back to the main motion as amended. Oh, sorry. All in favor of the main motion as amended, please. <coughs> Contrary? That is carried, Mr. Clerk. Councillor Thompson. Mayor Dahl, would it be uh, appropriate for me to table a motion now with regards to the sports plan? Yes, sir. I'd like to table a motion that $100,000 be allocated for the implementation of the sports plan and that the funding source be the Council Discretionary Reserve Fund. Is there a second if I can have that, a please? seconder, I'll speak to it. I'm sorry? Councillor um, Tom? Thank you. Um, you know, we engaged in a, ma a number of different sports initiatives this year. We all know it's the year of sports. We've talked about making Aurora Canada's uh, most active, healthiest community. Uh, but we also engage in a sports plan, which will be coming to us uh, in December at some point for council to deliberate upon and decide for 2016. Um, but given the budget constraints, I had a conversation with, uh, with Mr. Downey, and there's no funding in the budget per se, for the implementation of the sports plan. And so I think that if we're going to make uh, sports a, a priority in this community and one of the pillars of our strategic plan, then we need to allocate some resources behind it. Um, given the discussions around the budget, I, I wasn't comfortable with moving an amount as an operating line. And so I had a conversation with our interim CEO, Mr. Moyle, and uh, he also spoke with Mr. Elliott about how best to proceed. And so the suggestion was is that, you know, we use funds uh, from the reserve account as sort of a seed, you know, so that um, that can help us move forward with any initiatives that council decides. It also gives us the opportunity, since the plan is neither approved nor is it clear how we're going to move forward in 2016, that it just acts as a placeholder. We're essentially setting this money aside. And should council not decide to move forward with the sport plan or only por portions of it, then whatever's not used out of that reserve amount would then go back into the reserve. So. Um, really, it's just uh, a placeholder so that when the sport plan comes up and we can have discussions about what we're going to do, how we're going to implement it, what initiatives we want to bring forward for 2016, there's some dollars associated with it. At the end of 2016, of course, we can then, you know, evaluate where we're going with the sports plan, whether or not we want to make it um, uh, an essential component of the operating budget, and at that time, it would become an ongoing operational pressure. But for this one-year interim period, the funds would come out of the reserve account, and that would give us the, the opportunity not only to accomplish some of these initiatives, but also to evaluate and determine whether this is the right path forward. I thought it was an excellent suggestion from our interim CEO and, and, our, and our treasurer, and I think that uh, it's a good start for us and provides us with the seed money that we need to move forward with this sports plan because I truly believe that it's one of the um, uh, key initiatives for, for this, us this term. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. I've got uh, Councillor Tom. Thank you, Mayor Da. So, Councillor Thompson, if I understand that correctly, we're saying 
drawing 100,000 from a reserve, uh, discretionary reserve fund, and we're, we're using that as a reserve to fund the sport plan as we see fit over the year 2016, and any funds we do not allocate would be put back into the discretionary reserve. So would, they, would those funds be held into, in a, a separate reserve account for the sport plan? Uh, I'd go to Mr. Mr. Elliott. Through you, Mr. Chair, I'd suggest that you just uh, add the word that it's um, it's it's a um, <laughs> that a uh, hundred thousand dollars is set aside pending council's approval of a detailed spending plan uh, uh, for the sports plan. Because you have you haven't seen the plan, nor have you seen us. You may have questions. You may make some direction with respect to how much of that plan you're prepared to advance in 2016. So that was kind of the gist of my uh, question because I wanted to make sure you know we're not allocating that money now. We're going to wait and see the plan first <coughs> and and see what you know what we want to implement in 2016 and perhaps with a broader outlook to 17, 18, and beyond. But this gives, as you said, seed money. I'd say at least it's it's earmarked for. For that, and if we don't use it, it's not uh, engaged, and we can reallocate it to the reserve. So, just wanted to make that clear. Councillor Thompson, uh, you okay with that wording? No, exactly. And, and uh, I mean, again, the essence is just to ensure that we make a commitment that should we proceed with the the sports plan, that there's some funding allocated. It's still to be determined how, to what degree, what level, and absolutely, you know, if we only end up spending twenty-five thousand of it, then the rest goes back to the reserve. It's just held as a placeholder, as, uh, as was mentioned by both Councillor Tom and Mr. Elliott. So um, if Mr. Elliott wants to reword it so that it gives him such flexibility, I'm certainly comfortable with that. At the end of the day, I think the, the, key, the key consideration points is that there's $100,000 set aside for the implementation of the sports plan um, contingent upon what Council decides when it's brought before us. I'll just ask the, I'll just ask the clerk to comment on the wording. So, uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Actually, uh, the treasurer has indicated uh, uh, what wording would uh, allow him in his role to fulfill, and I'm comfortable with that. So, yeah. Yeah. any other comments or questions on Councillor Thompson's motion? Okay, calling the vote. All in favor? Contrary? That's carried. Thank you. Okay, that finishes the items that were uh, on the list for discussion. I've got. Uh, whoa, easy. Let me ask the question. Anybody else? <coughs> Councillor Kim. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, I was uh, caught napping, but uh, <laughs> I wasn't sh closing the meeting. Yeah. Uh, th through you to uh, Mr. CAO or, or Mr. Elliott, uh, regarding the multicultural festival, uh, I, I gather that there was uh, money allotted for that for next year, and if you can just kind of uh, expand on uh, where the funding for that will be coming from. Mr. Elliott? Through you, Mr. Chair, the draft budget has no provision for a multicultural event. Um, uh, if you are wishing to add something to it, there's been some discussions around the table. We need to know what the quantum is, but I suggest that we would do something very similar for that event as we just did for the sports plan. Uh, Mr. Downey, could you help with um, in terms of a quantum? Do you have any sense of I, that's, that we would need that information? Certainly, Mr. Mayor. Um, the, uh, the best parallel I can offer you is the event that was pro proposed for the Aurora 150. Unfortunately, we had a fairly rainy day. <coughs> the uh, total budget uh, for that particular event was $15,828.40. So we're um, somewhere between 16 to 18, uh, perhaps as much as $20,000. Thank you, Mr. Downey. Mr. Uh, Councillor Kim, back to you. So uh, then with, uh, can I put in a, a motion then to uh, have, uh, seeing that uh, the motion was passed uh, earlier in the year, and we all agreed, uh, I'd like to ask that uh, council approve 20,000 from, uh, I'm not sure which, re which reserve fund would be appropriate. What would you recommend, Mr. Neal? Mr. Elliott? Mr. Elliott? The, uh, the same, the council discretionary reserve fund and it would have the same uh, conditions on it as we just uh, had for the sports plan. I'll work with the clerk to finalize the wording. Okay. Uh, that sounds great Councilor, to me. Is there a second for that? <coughs> Councillor Thompson? Second on the, on the uh, do you want to speak to it? 
Thank you, Mayor Dodd. Through to Mr. Elliott. Mr. Elliott, you know, earlier we had a conversation with regards to the cultural mm -hmm. center, and we said, listen, there's still $30,000 sitting in this year's discretionary fund. Let's give 10 there, and that's a more appropriate way to manage it. Um, is that something we could do with this idea as well, is, is allocate the remainder, which is about $20,000, for the development of a multicultural festival in 2016? Um, I, I just, I, I just, you know, we've, we've had the conversations already in 2015. There's been a bit of a commitment for it. If the funds are there in the current budget for it, I'm just wondering if that's something we can do or if there's something that uh, prohibits us from using 2015 money for a 2016 event. Mr. Elliott. We uh, did something similar to this through you, Mr. Chair. Um, with the prior council, they committed to a, uh, the torch run prior to the election. And the uh, torch run was to occur after the election in the subsequent period. And so we uh, uh, deliberated and we apportioned funding from that current year to be carried over into the subsequent year for use for that purpose. And so it's, a, it's called a ca budget carry forward and we could do that. If you're proposing to take the uh, $20,000 from your 2015 council operating contingency carry it forward into 2016 for use for, uh, I believe the phrase is along the lines of a community multicultural event um, on a, whether it's a trial basis or a, a pilot, uh, see, see what the uptake is in the community and then uh, go from there in the 2017 budget. That would be appropriate. I mean, it really does, as, as Councilor Perry pointed out before, it, it really amounts to the same thing. If we don't use the council uh, contingency count this year, it just forms part of the sur surplus and it ends up going to the reserves and then we're drawn from it next year. Uh, but if we're having the conversation anyways tomorrow night and looking to do it for one, as long as there's space to do it, I'm fine <coughs> dealing with it tomorrow as well. Either way, satisfies me. Um, Mr. Clerk, what would have to happen? <coughs> Thank you. Uh, through Mr. Mayor, to achieve that, to you do the allocation from the 2015 Council uh, uh, approved budget, the current motion would have to be withdrawn and it would have to be considered at Council tomorrow night. Thank you. Councillor Kim. Councillor Gardner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I certainly am opposed to a multicultural festival and uh, I'd like not to have it in the winter, please. Um, but I, I'm not in favor of taking money that's left in a 2015 budget for an event that's going to happen in 2016, considering that uh, when we did the torch run and we put that money aside, that was because there had to be some planning that took place and I believe a commitment to one of the levels of government. This is, this is entirely different. This will not be planned until 2016. And I, I don't think this is proper budgeting. Okay, that's probably a discussion better had. Fair point, but I think that's a discussion better had when we do it. Any other comments on Councillor? Uh, well, I guess there's not much to talk about with Councillor Kim's. There's no motion on the floor, is there? Well, he withdrew it. Did you confirm the second yeah. time? Uh, did you withdraw? Then Councillor Thompson will handle it tomorrow night. Well, I think if that's the case, there should be some more comment. I'm okay with, like I said, I'm okay either way, because really, it amounts to the same thing. Whether well, the surplus goes in, well, you can direct mm -hmm. the surplus to be part of it or not. I mean, if we want to deal with it now, if Councillor Kim would prefer that, I'll, I'll support it. Okay, okay Councillor Kim, I'll support it, but only if you can ensure that the uh, temperature isn't three degrees and the rain deriving from the east at 500 miles an hour, like it was last time. I'll call my people. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> Councillor Tom. It's still on the floor what was proposed initially. Okay. That's, yep. That's what under my understanding is that we're still debating that, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Any further comments or questions on this? All in favor then? Contrary? Carried. Councillor Humphreys. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a, a question um, in terms of the museum. And staff doing a, a, a great, an amazing job. Staff, just a clarification that they were able to move forward with the next steps of the plan to evolve the museum containing the budget. I saw some brief information on it. Mr. Just Downing, wondering if do you have a question Downing for Mr. Downing might be able to answer if we're. Does that make sense? Through you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
uh, as you know, the curator made a presentation to council with regards to a three-year plan for, uh, for the uh, Aurora collection. Um, this year's budget uh, was not able to uh, address um, any of those years. Um, so we are not moving forward with that plan, although um, we do feel that there needs to be a change uh, with regards to the display itself. Um, so you'll see funds allocated in the budget for operating materials, and those are primarily there to deal with a, a new collection, or a new, excuse me, a new uh, uh, exhibit. Um, and we've also put some money in to deal with the textile collection. Um, we are concerned that it is deteriorating. We need to do something uh, fairly, in fairly short order with regards to um, preservation of those textiles. But we will not be moving forward with uh, some of the initiatives that we had identified in the plan. Um, that simply don't have the staff resources. Uh, Councillor? Councillor Abel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, um, you know, I, I, I wanted to ask for you the sports plan. It, was that something that is being undertaken by staff, or is there a consultant on that? Mr. Downey? Through you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Monteith Brown has been uh, engaged uh, to um, prepare a sports plan. They'll be doing a presentation tomorrow evening here on both the master plan and the sports plan. And can you remind uh, Council how much we, uh, we were spending on that con consultation? Mr. Downey? Through, uh, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I apologize. I don't have the exact number of their purchase order. Um, it's in the magnitude of $80,000. And, and so, you know, we, everyone likes a good plan. And, uh, and we have uh, Councillor uh, Thompson putting some money aside if we're going to move ahead, and I appreciate that. But I put through a, a live music uh, strategy uh, that's coming to Council soon, I believe, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, if I could ask Mr. Downey, is that coming soon? Mr. Downey? Through, um, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, um, I'll try to put this uh, up. My understanding is that um, you and I had a, had a meeting, Councillor Abel, and we were going to have a meeting with Michael Thompson from the City of Toronto uh, to discuss how we move this plan forward, and we haven't had that meeting yet. Okay, so I don't think that's going to take place, so I don't know. Okay, I, I, this is the first I've heard. I, last time I spoke uh, to you with regards to this, we were awaiting a meeting with Michael Thompson. Very good. Um, so I would, I would like to make a, mo a motion very similar to... Um, to Councillor Thompson's uh, for the for the sport uh, he had for the sport plan to put it in for a live music uh, plan going forward uh, that we put uh, fifty thousand uh, dollars onto the reserves and if we decide to go ahead then we'll have that money in the in the budget line item much like we have with the sport plan uh, and if we don't use it we don't use it so I, I would ask for a seconder on that. Is there a seconder for Councillor Abel's motion, please? Councillor Tom, thank you. And so this is kind of all new to me, uh, but I'm starting to appreciate it when, especially Councillor Kim brought up the fact that we have a cultural uh, festival that we had planned, a uh, motion going forward, and so you want to make sure there's money earmarked in case we go ahead. And, and the same with Councillor Thompson's uh, with the sport plan. And, and so I thought I would put that forward as part of the strategy because the recommendation in the report is to move further and, and funding is required, then we will have money earmarked uh, from the budget process and we can discuss what and how, uh, if any, would be allotted at that time, if Mr. there's any recommendation forward. Mr. Elliott, uh, do you have a suggestion for a reserve fund for the clerk for the motion? Uh, I would suggest the same one, uh, Council Discretionary Reserve Fund. Um, there's also um, the prerogative of, of council to reopen the budget and make those allocations during the year if, if, uh, if this matter comes forward. It, uh, I think I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Councilor Peary. Just to the motion before us, I don't, and I, I very well could have missed it, it's just not popping up into my mind. Was there a motion passed where council endorsed a live music plan? Mr. Downey, I'll go to you. So Mr. Mr. Mayor, um, yes, a notice of motion was uh, moved by um, uh, 
Councillor Abel, it's approved by Council that we look at a strategy. Um, and uh, it has actually been a long standing uh, uh, item. Um, however, we were moving forward with some resolution. Um, I, I, I take it Councillor Abel would like to move that uh, forward. And I, I think it makes sense. I, just, I couldn't recall if there was a, an approved motion. So if that's the case, we're just allocating funds for something that we were looking at. That makes sense to me. The fact that all of these are coming at the last minute out of reserve funds, um, we haven't really done anything this way in the past, so I, I'm surprised to see us moving in this direction now. Um, I guess I'll, I'll, seeing all of them that are coming through at this point, I think I'll need a little bit of time to collect on whether or not this is the right way to be going about it or whether we should be um, putting money aside out of the operating budget because these are operating items. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to have to think about all of these as a whole um, moving forward because maybe it does make more sense to allocate 20000 from operating for a specific multicultural uh, festival. Um, the funds from the sports plan, you know, I, I recognize that it can work this way. It's just not out of our practice. We always like to be future forward, um, looking at where we're spending money from, having good numbers in front of us and moving forward and from, from that point of view. And this doesn't seem like we're doing it the same way. Um, I'm not necessarily opposed to it. I just have to mull it over a little bit more. Thank you, Councillor Peary. Councillor Kim, to this item. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the, I'm also, as I hear more of this, uh, I'm not very, very happy with, uh, in terms of how this operating budget is now going, because when, when the multicultural fair was first proposed and it was passed by Council, and as well, Councillor Abel's uh, motion for, uh, for the music uh, uh, strategy, you know, it was intended that uh, that the monies would be coming from the operating budget. Um, I was unaware that it was going to come from that the multicultural fair was going to come from a uh, reserve uh, or contingency fund, and I don't think Councillor Abel, if I can speak for him, he can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I don't think he anticipated that this was going to be a reserve funding aspect as well. So I think that. Both these items should have been inside the regular operating budget, and it shouldn't have gone to the point where it's at a reserve. I'm not sure where we go from here in terms of whether staff go to the to the drawing board and, and try to uh, input this funding in the normal uh, operating budget, or uh, or for this one year only, just for the sake of uh, uh, consistent. Or, you know, everything's gone smoothly so far, but uh, this is not what I had anticipated. And uh, just want to put that I'm, out there for my comments. Thank you. I'm going to ask the CAO to speak to this. This is somewhat different from whether we've, certainly different from what we've done in the past. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it's my understanding that uh, there is a policy of council that uh, when you accumulate surplus, a surplus each year, the surplus goes into, and you have a policy to put it into the rate stabilization fund or other funds. So basically, um, you estimate the amount of money required to run the business. Uh, you don't require that much as much money. That's a surplus. The surplus goes into these reserve funds. You have very healthy reserve funds which have been developed as a result of, of multiple surpluses. You have in excess of a million dollars in the council discretionary fund, I believe, is a million and change? and $3.5 million in the rate stabilization fund. So you have the money already in place uh, which has been put in place basically as a consequence of surpluses which have been developed over the years. Um, <clears throat> when we were tasked with the notion of trying to develop an operating budget, we made a conscious decision to meet Council's requirements, uh, meet the operating uh, pressures that are facing the organization, and still meet the target. The, the items that have been discussed tonight, I think, fall nicely into the category of, 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 uh, of of uh, projects which should proceed because there is a council policy to proceed with uh, with uh, the sports tourism or sports plan 
there's a council direction to deal with the music piece. You brought up the issue, and I think it's been discussed about, uh, Councillor Kim, about the multicultural festival. There are, there are sufficient funds in place in those reserve funds to do these one-time only events. If this required sustainable funding, I would completely agree. They should be in the operating budget uh, because they're going to have ongoing financial uh, costs. The issue of, of uh, the sports plan is a one-time only plan. The cultural festival is essentially a pilot project to make sure that, that there's the uptake there and then if there is, that would be reflected in next year's operating budget. And the same would apply with the other item which was discussed earlier, uh, just to see whether it, it um, materializes and if so, then there's a change in service level in the next year. So <clears throat> in my view, yes, it's perhaps a bit different than the way it's been done in the past, but I think it allows council to proceed with three projects have the funding source, you have the money in the bank, uh, you're able to measure uh, exactly whether you're getting results. You may not need all the funds that are necessary once you develop the specific plans, uh, but the key is that you're identifying the funding source to allow you to proceed with three projects. Uh, at the same time, uh, we can prepare, we have prepared a budget which meets your objective of the 1.8% increase. So projects are proceeding, uh, proceeding as directed, Funding sources have been identified, and we have a budget that meets your requirements. Councillor Kim. <coughs> no, well, thus far, uh, interim CAO Mr. Moyle has had a pretty pretty phenomenal track record thus far with us. So uh, I, I'm I'm inclined to uh, trust his judgment. Um, from my, for, for my thought, I, I guess I was under the impression that the multicultural festival was going to be a success and that it was going to be an ongoing thing. But I guess in reality, it is the first time we're doing it and there's no guarantees where uh, it's going to be a success or not. So uh, uh, I understand. Mr. Elliott, just uh, I think perhaps for our edification, could you um, give the 25-word the overview of the, the million and a half dollar council fund? whatever that number is. The council discretionary fund is a reserve fund of uh, councils created uh, originally from 10% of the uh, hydro sale proceeds. And it is uh, for the use of the discretion of council and in support of its operations. And, and I believe probably the biggest withdrawal from that was the 750,000, or no, uh, was two million or so to the, the rehabilitation of the Church Street School. Uh, Something like that? That piece actually came from, um, actually, you're right. It did come from the Council Discretionary Reserve Fund. Thank you. $2.7 million. So I think the, uh, the, way, the way the CAO explained it makes a lot of sense. Uh, One-time issues. Well, I've got uh, to this. Councillor uh, Tom, <coughs> this, this being the Multicultural Festival. No, no, it's no. the uh, music one. I'm sorry? Music Live music. I apologize. Just, just so you know, we were talking about remembering a lot of the motions that took place. Both of these are asked for a report, and so we haven't even seen the report. So all we're talking about now is placeholders, allocating funding, a funding source that if and when that report comes back, and if we decide to move forward with the report, we know where the funding is coming from. We could have done that anyways. We're just, we're just identifying it now. Okay, so. Councillor Thompson, Councillor Maracas, and Councillor Perry Nabel for the second time. I think, you know, it has been drawn out, but I just wanted to, to state that. And so through you to Mr. Downey. Mr. Downey, be it the Multicultural Festival or the Live Event Strategy, I believe both motions ask for staff to come back with a report and investigate. I haven't seen a report on either event. Is that correct? Through you, Mr. Mayor, that's correct. And so I just, I just want to draw that dividing line between the sports plan and the other ones that have been brought forth. Uh, the multicultural event and the, and the live event strategy, while both great initiatives asked staff to report back and come back with an investigation and a report to talk about it, the sports plan was before council. The report was brought forward by Mr. Downey. Council endorsed the development of a sports plan. Council endorsed putting money aside for a consultant. So I do feel that they're at different stages 
And so I felt that it was appropriate for the sports plan because councils already endorsed the development of a sports plan and said that this is an initiative that they want to carry <coughs> forward with. And given that in just a few weeks the plan was going to be presented to us, I thought it was prudent for us to do it. So, you know, I, I understand the desire to, to allocate or earmark funding for the other ones, and I, I don't want to necessarily, um, uh, you know, um, separate them too much, but I do think there is a difference between the sports plan and the work that's already gone beforehand with council endorsing the development and versus the other ones that just asked for a notice of mo or which asked for a report to come back. The council's not made a decision whether or not to hold these functions. Councilor Rackus. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, um, I, I, I don't have any issues with how we're moving forward. I think the CAO uh, said it quite uh, clearly and perfectly. I think um, we have three things that uh, we as a council have in essence approved, not fully, but to we've approved motions to move forward. And I think uh, just putting some money aside just to, uh, in case we decide to move forward with them is I think something that would be useful for us 